Well, you know what? Thanks to you, I know now I can go on tour and teach a figure of eight, which before the crowd couldn't get it, it was too complicated. Um, one thing I would like to do is, uh, could, could, could I ask you one second to, to come and help me? Okay. Um, ropes have a lot to do with sensors. You know, you have to use all your sensors and your touch, your eyes. So here, I have a very heavy, no, never let go of your little, put it around your neck. Oh my God. Okay, um, we're going to see how good you are with your senses. Uh, let's see. The, the sense of uh, um, to hear, right? Well, we hear with our ears. But there is something um, that actually doctors, you know, the doctor, no? No. The thing that doctors uh, learn, but it was more in the 18th century, is that in the body we have concentrated cells for hearing, and they are on your forehead. Okay, and by, uh, this is true. By the way, some stethoscopes were invented in the 18th century. They had three branches, two branches for the ear and one branch with a little rubber band to reach the cells here to help you hear. That's one example. The other example is if you are not James Bond and you are in a hotel room and you spy on the other room, you want to hear what they say, right? You take a crystal glass with a bottom and a stem and you put the glass on the wall and you put the other end on your forehead and you can hear. Okay, so that was just a little parenthesis about the sense of hearing. Now, the sense of touch. For well, the sense of touch, we touch with our fingers. Okay, but, and not many people know that, there is, on every person, there is a concentrated cell of touching on the top of your wrist. Okay, and I'm going to prove it to you. First, this is a heavy rope, and I have at home a very sensitive scale, and I measured it, I scaled it. I want you to tell me very roughly, using your normal sense of touch, like this, right? Tell me how much it weighs, roughly. Two ounces, that's very good. That's very good. Now, I want, put your hands like this, I want you to tell me the weight of that using the cells on your, the top of your wrist, okay? And actually, don't get distracted. Look up, and now tell me, how do you think that weighs? <laughs> sorry, sorry. This was, by the way, very politically incorrect to handcuff a woman and to lead her of the state. Did I hurt you? No, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I... Hold on, I... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to... Why don't you have a break? It's, it's really hard to untie. So uh, this is in my book also because you never know when you need an improvised handcuff. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to stop my monologue and we're going to open a dialogue. And we have uh, people with the microphones, you see, uh, left and right. So if you raise your hand... Uh, okay, we have one person. Would you please give the mic? <coughs> Okay, so when you're standing at one end of the rope between the two towers, how do you convince yourself to push your foot out? Okay, uh, I will repeat the question um, in case you have not heard it. Is um, What convinced me once I had a foot on the wire at the World Trade Center, that was a long time ago, um, to put the other foot? Well, actually, this is not a not question. So are you the type of person who is going to come to a Twin Towers walk lecture and you're going to raise your hand and ask me how I tie a knot? <laughs> Probably. No, I'm just teasing. But um, I will answer the question because I, uh, that will not be nice. But you know what? Actually, I had been waiting for that moment. If you read my book, Man on Wire, or see my film, Man on Wire, you will see, you will know, I learned... I, I waited for that moment for six and a half years, not standing still and dreaming, but working on my dream, on bringing a ton of equipment secretly inside the towers. So the moment I found myself on the wire with one foot, I must tell you, I was impatient. It was not really an act of courage, although people on the floor said, oh, this guy he is so courageous. But to me, it was almost impatience. I had waited for so long and I had rehearsed it in my head so many times that with impatience and of course with uh, elation I did that sudden step and then I went on 
thank you for asking that departure question. But let's see if there is a, a not, yes, a microphone is coming to you. Thank you. I wondered if you had seen at uh, Madison Square Park the public display that's there now that's a uh, lobster rope that's knotted and then layered into waves that go around the park. You would really like No, it. and this is yeah. a shame, but I am very busy working on my book number 10. It's a book about creativity. The subtitle is Creativity, the Perfect Crime. And um, I have to give my manuscript in a couple of weeks. But friends told me you should go and see that uh, sculpture um, of not, and I will for sure. Um, yes, please, the lady here, and the mic is coming to you. Thank you. Your training for all this, how did it happen? Okay, the, the training for, um, for not making, obviously you need to have a, a little rope. Where is my little rope? Always here. And that's why you all have a little rope. And then in the book, of course, you'll have a second rope. So basically, I always have this rope in my pocket and I train, I practice. Even if I am in a subway or walking in the forest with friends or whatever, I always have a little rope. First, it's very useful. I can attach it and I can save the day sometimes. And secondly, <laughs> I can practice, for example, without looking. I can do my figure of eight, which if you practice, you will be able to do, right? Once you know the move, you don't really need to look at it. I can do many knots in, in uh, my back. So I, I practice and also I learn how the knot works. And um, once, once you understand how the, the, the design, the mechanics, the engineering of a knot, then it's much easier to do it, obviously. But you still need practice. Um, but, but with a book, you can learn uh, 10, 12 knots in a couple of days. And you don't need, like me, to know 200 knots to go through life, you know? Just uh, five, six. Actually, I start the book by talking about the gang of five which are five of the knots that I believe are the most important. So learn those first. And then if you are hungry for more knotting knowledge, you know, keep going through the book and learn more. Or learn the knot that you need. You need every weekend to put your bike on top of your of your of the roof of your car and you never knew which knot. Well, it's in the book. There is a specific knot that tightens very well. So that's my advice. Practice. And maybe a couple of more questions. Let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, Philippe, it's a two-part question. Yeah, the first, is there a knot that takes two people to make? And if so, did you ever do it? Yes, there is a knot that takes two people to make. And um, would, uh, would uh, actually, since you are the one uh, asking the question, please come over here. And um, would, you, would you come just once more? Okay, this is a knot that is in my section of the book, knots that are not knots because humans don't make knots, although you can, you know, almost make knots. So what it is, is, and maybe it's those of you who are boy scout or, you know, or girl scout, you learn it because it's a way to carry an injured uh, friend back to the camp. So what you do is you put your hands like this, okay, and you go, you go on to your wrist like this, and then you go onto your wrist here and you attach your wrist. And, you know, turn it to the audience so they can see, Look at that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit there, I am the injured kid. Uh, bring it down, bring it down. Okay. Ah, and I like a lemonade, please. Thank you. Okay, so you see, it takes two people. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, there is an infinity, there is actually 4,000 knots. And uh, one man in 1900, Clifford Ashley, an English uh, sailor, actually spent 30 years of his life creating a book of not called the Ashley Book of Nod. It's the Bible. And there are book um, authorities of knots and there are big knot tires all over the world. There is a knot tying association, a guild in England, of course, I am a member. And the president of the guild, he received the book the other day and he said, I couldn't believe it, I, I, I cut it down. No, I didn't cut it, it was an email. But anyway, um, I printed it, and I cut it down, and I pasted it on the wall because he said, Philip, why not is the be best book of not after Ashley. Oh. So, what do I finish on that? Thank you very much. <laughs>